Welcome to this series of three tutorials about microphones. My name is Jiska Housing. I am a Dutch artist, musician and DJ living and working in Oslo, Norway. And in these tutorials I will be guiding you through the basics of what a microphone is, how they work and look at some more experimental ways of recording. This first tutorial dives into what a microphone is and looks at the main types of microphones that exist and how these work. The second one focuses on important specifications of these different types, how they influence what kind of recording you get and concrete examples of various mics. And lastly, in tutorial number three, we will meet artist Signe Liden to look at her work with experimental microphones, how these work, and we'll take one of her microphones out for a spin. What is a microphone? To start answering this question, let's first establish what sound is. Basically, sound is the movement or vibration of particles in the air. Sound waves are mechanical energy waves. What a microphone does is converting those sound waves into electrical energy waves, the microphone's electric output signal. Therefore, all microphones are transducers a device that converts variations in a physical quantity, such as sound waves or brightness, into an electrical signal, or vice versa. There are different techniques for doing this, resulting in different types of microphones. What is similar though for all these is that the sound waves hit a membrane, also called a diaphragm. The human ear also contains a membrane, the eardrum. Even so, human hearing is quite different from a microphone. One reason is that our selective attention plays a big role in it. We tune out some sounds and focus on others, an active back and forth. A microphone is passive in this sense. It receives sound waves and transforms these into an electric signal based on its set specifications. Another difference is that our hearing isn't only enabled by our ears and eardrum, we receive sound waves with our whole body. The shape of our ears and their placement on our head influence our hearing as well, enabling us to localize sound sources. A microphone can record in one channel, called mono, two channels, stereo, or multi-channel, for example for ambisonic use. Simply put, because of how our brains work, Stereo and multi-channel recordings can reproduce the perception of sound source localization of space, whereas mono can't. There are many different types of mics available, and sometimes it's hard to see the forest for all the trees. So we'll go back to the basics and look at some main categories. Condenser microphones, dynamic microphones, ribbon microphones, and a group of mics whose terminology is sometimes used interchangeably, even though they do not work the same at all, which makes it confusing and worth to sort out. These are contact mics, piezo microphones and pickups. The basis of a condenser mic consists of two electrically charged plates, the membrane or diaphragm, which can move back and forth, and a backplate, which is static. These two plates are placed in a capsule, or housing, of the microphone. Because the plates need to be electrically charged to work, this type of microphone needs phantom power, which means it is an active type of microphone. The two plates form a capacitator, which can store a small amount of electric energy, dependent on its size and the proximity of the plates. When sound waves hit the membrane of the microphone, it moves, changing the amount of space between the membrane and the backplate. The closer the plates, the higher the amount and the other way around. So here sound waves, mechanical energy waves, are transformed into an electric signal, which is the output of the microphone. This electric signal needs to be sent to a device called a preamp to boost the signal up to the level you need. As a condenser mic is an active microphone, it requires phantom power, unlike passive microphones that do not need it. An example of a passive microphone is the dynamic microphone, 
the second category of mics we'll look at. The basis of a dynamic mic consists of a magnet, coiled wire and a membrane placed in the microphone's capsule. The coiled wire is attached to the membrane so that when sound waves hit the membrane and move it, the coil moves too. The magnet provides a magnetic field that the coil moves within. When the coiled wire moves near the magnet, an electric current is induced, which is key to this design. The movement of the membrane and the coiled wire creates variations in the electrical current, which forms the output of the microphone. Also this output signal needs to be sent to a preamp to boost the signal up to the right level. The third category of mics is ribbon microphones. Ribbon microphones are available both as passive and active microphones. Their design is similar to a dynamic mic using a different type of membrane. One of the drawbacks of a dynamic mic is the relatively high mass of the membrane and coiled wire that has to be moved by the sound waves. Ribbon mics contain a membrane that is made of a thin strip, a ribbon, of metallic foil that is suspended between two magnetic poles. Sound waves move the membrane, which changes the amount of space between it and the magnets, which creates a very small electric current. This amount is so small that it is too low to just be sent on to a preamp. Therefore, it is first sent to a transformer. A transformer is nothing more than two coils with different amounts of winds in close proximity of one another. The ratio in ribbon mics is usually between 1 to 20 and 1 to 40, which means that one volt is turned into 20 or 40 volts. In addition to this transformation, you still need a preamp to boost the resulting signal up to the right level. Lastly, we will look at the confusing contact piezo mics pickups group. These terms are sometimes wrongly used interchangeably, which makes it worth looking at what is what and the differences between them. First off, a contact microphone. This is a microphone that, as the name suggests, records audio vibrations through contact with solid objects. They are not sensitive to air vibrations, but convert structure-borne sound waves to an electrical current. They are, for example, used to record acoustic instruments or underwater, a hydrophone. With a contact mic, the membrane of the microphone is in a way expanded through the object it is attached to. The piezo microphone is a type of contact mic. Other names for it include piezoelectric mic, ceramic mic or crystal mic. The mic contains an element with piezoelectric crystals pressed between two metal plates. When sound waves move the membrane, this changes the pressure on the crystals. The alternating pressure produces an electric current in the crystals, due to the piezoelectric effect. Crystals are piezoelectric when they acquire a charge when compressed. The higher the pressure, the stronger the electric current and vice versa. The generated electric signal needs to be sent to a preamp to boost it up to the right level. Then on to pickups. A pickup works with a setup kind of similar to that of a condenser microphone. It consists of a magnet attached to a base plate and coiled wire. In the case of a pickup, when placed on a string instrument, where it's often used, the movements of the strings above the magnets disturb the magnetic field and create a current in the coil. A pickup only registers these disturbances in the magnetic field, so not disturbances caused by sound waves in the air, as for example the condenser microphone does. Fun fact, this also means that a pickup works in a vacuum, unlike air vibration based microphones. So if the definition of a microphone is that it converts sound waves, acoustic energy, into an electric signal, 
A pickup is not a microphone. But both are transducers, a device that converts variations in a physical quantity, such as sound waves or brightness, into an electrical signal or vice versa. So to sum up, we've looked at four main categories of microphones, condenser, dynamic, ribbon, and contact microphones. In addition, we also looked at a type of contact mic, the piezo microphone. And lastly, we looked at pickups. During the next tutorial, we will dive deeper into important microphone specifications, what they mean and how they influence what kind of recording you get.